وعلى الأرواح التي هلت بفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر الأحد مني للزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته on this day of Ashura, we offer our condolences to Imam Sahab al-Asri wa Akhir zaman as we commemorate the tragic martyrdom of his grandson, Imam Hussain of the Fields of Karbala. We offer our condolences to Rasulullah on the, con on the martyrdom of his grandson, Abba Abdullah. We offer our condolences to Lady Fatima Zahra alayhi salam as she witnessed the tragic day of Ashura to see her son Hussein being killed on the plains of Karbala. We offer our condolences to Amir al-Mu'mineen as he witnesses his son Abba Abdullah being killed on the plains of Karbala. We offer our condolences to Imam Hassan al-Mujtaba as he is being told about the martyrdom of his brother Abba Abdullah. Brothers and sisters, on this tragic day of Ashura, I take us back to the 61st year after the Hijra on the 10th day of Muharram. It was a day just like this. It was a day that will live in infamy. The morning began with Imam Hussein surrounded by his family and his friends. His family members, his companions were all with him on the tragic morning of Ashura. On that tragic morning that Hazrat Ali Akbar gave the Adhan, he proclaimed Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The camp of Imam Hussein realized that this was that farewell Adhan, that after this call to prayer, Ali Akbar would be no more. Ali Akbar continued in his Adhan, proclaiming the oneness of Allah. He proclaimed the testimony to the messengership of Rasulullah. After this Adhan, after the final Fajr prayer had been finished, on that day of Ashura, brothers and sisters, over these last 10 nights, we've been looking at one of the shohada and every one of our majalis. But keep in mind that when we recount every single one, that Imam Hussein was living this day of Ashura. It was unfolding before his eyes every second of, of the hour of the day of Ashura. When one by one on the day of Ashura, Imam Hussein had to bid farewell to his companions. One after the other went to the battlefield, brothers and sisters. One after the other, they called out, Assalamu alaikum ya Abba Abdullah. And when they were about to die, they called, alaikum minni ya Abba Abdullah. On the day of Ashura, brothers and sisters, Imam Hussein went to the battlefield so many times. He went one by one as his companions fell. One by one as they fell, he went to give them his last greetings of salam, to give them the promise of paradise. When one point finally comes when there are no more companions left of Abab Abdullah, all of the companions have given their lives. The family of the Prophet is now their turn to give their lives to Imam Hussein and for the cause of Islam. One by one, the family goes to the field of Karbala. They make their farewell to Imam Hussein. They go and give their farewells to the ladies of the camp. They go and give their farewell to the children who are in the tents. They know that this will be their last regards to meet the, the, the family of Imam Hussein. One by one, as they give their lives on the plains of Karbala, as we continue in this that tragic day, the plains of Karbala are filling with the blood of the family of Rasulullah. Everywhere we look, there are bodies which are piling up on this day of Ashura. We see that everyone is dying one by one. Qasim has been cut to pieces. Hazrat Ali Akbar has given his life for his master and his mawla. Hazrat Abu al-Fadl Abbas goes to the battlefield. He loses both of his arms. Imam Hussein has that final embrace of Abu Abdullah. At that point, Imam Hussein said those tragic words, Al-An in Qasr al-Dahri. It was at your death, Abu al-Fadl Abbas. And Imam Hussein cries out, and now my back is broken. 
But brothers and sisters, there was one young baby who still had to give his life on the day of Ashura. That was a young six-month child of Imam Hussein Hazrat Ali Asghar, the one who had no sword, that warrior who had no armor, that young brave warrior who had no helmet to protect him from the enemy attacks. Imam Hussein takes this young soldier to the battlefield, and we know that young Hazrat Ali Asghar never made his way back to the camp with a, th with a, with a full stomach. He died with a thirst on his lips. He died with a thirst on his tongue. But brothers and sisters, the day has just not and has still not ended. There is still one man to give his life on the day of Ashura, that is Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Imam has seen so much already in these hours on the day of Ashura. How much more can a man take? How much more can a man face of seeing his family and friends one by one losing their lives on this hot plains of Karbala? The, the, the historians mention, the, the writers of the Maktal mention that finally Imam Hussein realized that this was it, that the enemy wanted him, that they wanted his blood, that they wanted his head on the spear. The his, writers of Maktal mention that Imam Hussein, he goes to the tent of the ladies, he goes and he goes to bid farewell to the ladies of the camp, he goes to his beloved sister Zainab, he goes to his sister Lady Zainab alayha salam. They have that final embrace brothers and sisters, the embrace of a brother with his sister. He gives his final regards to his wife Rabab. Many of the ladies in the camp begin to wail, they begin to moan, they begin to slap their heads. They realize that this is the end, that they will never see their master anymore. At this part, brothers and sisters, we're told that Lady Zainab takes the hand of Imam Hussein. They walk to a neighboring tent where the fourth Imam, Imam Zain al-Abidin, is laying sick. Imam Zain al-Abidin, by the will of Allah has been sick during this tragic ordeal of Ashura to protect the Imam, to protect the legacy of Ali Muhammad. At this point, Imam Hussein and Lady Zainab make their way into the tent of Imam Zain al Abidin. Imam Zain al Abidin is lying in a state of unconsciousness. He eventually comes out of this the state that he's in. He sees his father, the Rabbi Abdullah. When he had last seen him, his beard was black, but now his beard has turned to white from the grief and sorrow of the day of Ashura. Uh, not only is it turned white, but it's turned red because of the blood of Hazrat Ali Asghar all over his beard. <laughs> Imam Zain al Abidin looks towards the face of his father. We can only imagine. We can't even think of what Imam Zain al Abidin is thinking. He's asking his father, Oh, father, what has happened to you? Why are you in this state? Where is Hazrat Ali Akbar? Where is Abul Fadl al Abbas? And what can Imam Hussein say to his beloved son? How will Imam Zain al Abidin begin to comprehend what has happened in these last few hours on the day of Ashura? We're told that Imam Hussein at this point, he gives over the trusteeship, the guardianship, the imamat to the fourth imam because he knows he will be going soon. He gives over the legacy that he was given from his brother Imam Hassan. He gives over the legacy which Imam Hassan had inherited from his father Amir al-Mu'mineen. And what Imam al-Amir al-Mu'mineen had inherited from Rasulullah the imamat. This is now being passed on to Imam Zain al-Abideen. At one point, the writers of Maktal mention at this point in the, in the this gathering of the family, that Imam Zain al Abidin tries to get up off of the bed. He tries to get up, he asks Lady Zainab, he asks his aunt, he says, bring me my walking stick and bring me my sword. Lady Zainab questions him, oh Zain al Abidin, why do you want your sword? Why do you want your walking stick? He says, I have to go and so help my father. I have to give my life for my father. I need my sword to fight the enemies of Allah. I need my walking stick to be able to walk towards the battlefield. Imam Hussein realized that is if Imam Zain al Abidin is to give his life, if Imam Zain al Abidin gives his life, that this will be the end of the Nasr of Ali Muhammad. He says, Oh, my son, he goes, You are not well. Jihad is not upon you right now. Your jihad will continue after the day of Ashura. Your struggles, your patience will be needed after the day of Ashura. At this At point, this after the treasure is given to Imam Zain al Abidin, the legacy of Imamat, Imam Hussein gives a farewell again to Imam Zain al Abidin, to Lady Zainab alayhi salam, and he exits the tent. 
he begins to exit the tent. Historians have a different narration what happens at this point, brothers and sisters, but whatever the case may be, a point comes in the day of Ashura that the young daughter, Sakina of Imam Hussein, this young four-year-old daughter realizes that her father is about to make his way towards his eventual demise. Lady Bibi Sakina remembers that her uncle Abbas had gone one time for water and that he never returned back to the tent. She remembers that Hazrat Ali Akbar had gone towards the battlefield and he never came back. She remembers all of these brave warriors had gone one after the other after the other and they never came back to the tent to bid their family farewell. This young girl, she realizes, although she is so young, she knows that something is about to happen. She realizes something will transpire that her Baba will never come back again, that she'll never see her father again in the same state. At this point, brothers and sisters, Lady Sakina, she begins to cry. Imam Hussein realizes that the state that she's in, we're told that Imam Hussein begins to lie on the hot plains of Karbala by the tents. He says, oh, my daughter Sakina, he says, oh, come and rest on my your father's chest. This was the tradition, brothers and sisters, that Lady Sakina would sleep on her father's chest every night in order for her to go to bed. She would go to her father Hussein and he would console her. He would hold her and tug, hold her tightly and she would go to sleep on his chest. The same thing happens on this day of Ashura. She has seen so much. She needs that comfort and consolation from her father. She sleeps on his chest for a few minutes. All of a sudden, the, his, the writers of Maktal mention that Lady Sakina wakes up up. She says, oh, Father, go. I know that your, your time is now to go. Imam Hussein asks his young daughter, he says, why have you had such a change of heart? She says, oh, my father, I saw your mother, Lady Fatima, in my dream, and she's calling for you to come. She's calling for you to come back to her. Go, my father, go and meet your mother, Lady Zahra. Imam Hussein Imam mounts Ziljana. Ziljana, who has already seen so much on this day of Ashura, he's already taken his master so many times to the battlefield. But does Lilda Ziljana know that this will be the last time that he takes his master back? The writers of Maktal mention that Imam Hussein makes his way towards the battlefield. 30,000 troops against one lone soldier of Allah. 30,000 troops against Imam Hussein, against the, the son of the messenger of Allah. We're told that he makes his way into the Maidan, the battlefield of Karbala. The bodies are all around him. The blood stained since ground of Karbala is all around him. The enemy sees and many of them run away in fright. But many of them stay and try to have an attack against Imam Hussein. He kills many of the enemy soldiers. Finally, at one point, he goes back towards the camp. He goes back to the camp for one final salam to the family. He greets the family one more time. And this is the final farewell. That Imam Hussein will make on the day of Ashura. He bids his farewell to all the ladies. He bids his farewell to the children of the camp and he makes his way back towards the field of Karbala. Brothers and sisters, this is the last farewell that Imam Hussein will have with all of his family. He makes his way towards the army. He makes his way towards the enemy camps and they begin their attack against Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein fights bravely as a son of Haider al Karar. Imam Hussein fights and many of them flee, many of the enemies are killed. At one point, however, the enemy forces begin to say that kill Imam Hussein, end this battle right now. People begin to throw rocks at Imam Hussein. People begin to throw arrows at Imam Hussein. Historians mention that one arrow was shot at Abdullah. It hits Imam Hussein right in the forehead. It hits Imam Hussein right in the forehead. He pulls the arrow out of his forehead and blood, be blood begins to drip onto his face. His blood begins to fall all over over his face. He holds his blood, he holds his wound as he continues to fight. At that point, we're told an enemy throws a rock from the right side, and it hits Abba Abdullah on the right side of the face. The attacks are continuing one after the other after the other. Incessant attacks against the presence of Abba Abdullah. Eventually, the attacks become harsher and harsher. Historians mention at one point that Imam Hussein falls off of his horse. He falls off of 
his horse and his young nephew Abdullah, the son of Imam Hassan. He sees what's happening from far away. He escapes from Lady Zainab. He runs towards the battlefield. Hazrat Abdullah, this young 10-year-old boy, runs towards the battlefield. He goes to protect his uncle Imam Hussein. As he's over top of the body, Imam Hussein, the curse of Shimma is present. Shimmer tries to hit Imam Hussein, but he hits Abdullah. We're told that his arm falls off. His arm is severed off of his body. He begins to wail and moan. At this point, the curse of Harmala shoots that third arrow that he shot. As we mentioned, he shot seven arrows on the day of Ashura. Four of the arrows hit their target. That third arrow was the one that hit Abdullah. Abdullah falls with the arrow in his chest, and he dies near Abba Abdullah. But brothers and sisters, there's one arrow left in the bag of Harmala. After this young Abdullah dies, we're told that the enemy forces begin to surround Imam Hussein. They begin to poke and prod at Imam Hussein. Some have arrows, some have spears, some have their swords. Imam Zain al-Abidin, after the tragedy of Karbala, he narrates that his body, his father's body, had over 40 injuries on it. 40 wounds from people poking at his body as they went around him. As they went around poking and stabbing at the body of Abba Abdullah. This continued for so many minutes, brothers and sisters. Lady Zainab is in the tent. We can only imagine what she is witnessing. We can only imagine what the ladies in the caravan are witnessing on this day of Ashura. Eventually, as Imam Hussein is breathing his last, he begins to do the dhikr of Allah. He says, Bismillah wa billah wa ala millati Rasulillah. Indeed, I began in the name of Allah and in the, on the nation of Rasulullah, Imam Hussein, even in this tragic state, continues to do the dhikr of Allah. He continues to remember Allah. We fast forward to the actual scene of on the day of Ashura. Imam Hussein is suffering profusely from all of his injuries. He's suffering all of, all of a sudden that arrow comes, that fourth arrow that that curse, that curse Harmala had shot. He shot four arrows on the day of Ashura that had their target. That fourth arrow pierces the chest of Abba Abdullah Hussein. Historians mention that it pierces his chest and goes through into his heart. Some of the books of Maktal mention that it goes all the way through to the back of his body. And in this sad state, Imam Hussein is feeling the pain. The blood is dripping from his chest. The blood is coming from all parts of his body. The Imam Hussein again begins to do the remembrance of Allah. He begins to remember that he is going back to Allah, that this is his eventual end. At one point, brothers and sisters, we see that that cursed shimmer begins to approach Imam Hussein. Cursed shimmer begins to he want to do what he what he has planned to do for so many days. I leave you with this one last statement from our 12th Imam, our 12th Imam who is grieving today on the day of Ashura, our 12th Imam who is witnessing the tragic scene unfold on the day of. Karbala, the tragic event where Lady Zainab is seeing her brother being killed on the day of Ashura. Where Lady Zainab, Lady Fatima is seeing the tragic events of her brother being, her son being killed on Ashura. When our 12th Imam, Imam al-Mahdi speaks about what happens on the day of Ashura. In the Art Nahia, our 12th Imam says, and I'll end with this. He says that Shimmer Jalisun ala Sadrihi. That Shimmer is sitting on the chest of Imam Hussein. That Shimmer is sitting on the chest of Imam Imam Hussein. The shimmer grabs Imam Hussein by the beard. He lifts up Imam Hussein's head. He lifts up his head so his neck is present. And shimmer takes the sword. He takes the sword and sword and puts it on the neck of Imam Hussein. Wow, Hussein. Wow, Muhammad. Wow, Musibata.